people, my name is Neonite362, welcome back to Let's Play Miles After the Investigation. In the last episode, we, I believe it was when we met Von Karma, we partnered with Gumshoe, and now we're investigating the rest of this uh, weird airport that apparently has stairs now, too? And in this episode, we're going to continue doing that. For some reason, I wanted to present something to LeBlanc, I don't remember. Represent the cloth? Can you please take a look at this for me? It's a Borginian cloth. As I suspected, your hat is made of the same material, I suppose. Yes, of course! This fabric is so famous, orders come from over the seas for more. Oh, so, um, this is a very famous cloth. And this is the cargo you were talking about earlier? No, 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 my cargo this time is much, much more gigantic. You, detective! What can you... What... When can my cargo be moved? You can get your cargo back when we're done investigating, pal. Stubbornness of you police, that is no good! It is no good that attendants refuse to exit the attendance room too. Isn't that the thing that they're supposed to do, though? That attendant. I wonder if he's talking about Miss Tenero. Well, let's figure it out. What did you mean by that attendant? She was taken into the attendance room for her interview. And then they still have not come out. They make no sign of coming out either. I was finished with my own interview much earlier, quicker than here. Why is Mr. Tenero's interview the, one, the only one that's taking up so much time? I don't know. Maybe something- Ah, oh, great. Well, I think that's all that we can do now. Miles Edward, you were given free reign to examine the plane, weren't you? Yes, I was able to obtain the cooperation of the flight attendants. When was that? Speaking of attendants, I'd like to speak with Miss Tenero. I wonder if you might grant me permission to enter the flight attendants room? Hmm. <laughs> Before I do... Still have to clear up a few issues surrounding your own circumstances. I need to figure out how to make a German accent. I understand. You may have tricked those attendants with your sophisticated talking, but you can't pull the wool over my eyes, Maljad. Okay, what is wrong with my voice? Oh, wait, what? Oh, was not expecting this. Let's not complicate things and go with the most obvious. The scene of the crime was here, in the very lounge the body was discovered. From the time of the victim was seen calling for attendant until his body was found. The only person in this lounge the entire time was you, Miles Edgeworth. This, unmistakably, makes you the likely suspect. I'm wondering about those uh, footsteps. What do you think about the footsteps, then? Do you have a problem with that? No, but it's not like you to use such vague wording. You're usually a bit more absolute. I'm simply trying to watch out for you. Is my kind or is my kindness too hard for you to comprehend? Ooh. But your leniency isn't necessary, for I will soon prove my innocence. If I want to continue my investigation, I'll have to break her line of logic fast. I feel like it has something probably to do with um let's not complicate things. Um the scene being at the lounge. Which could be wrong. Do you know all there is to know about the crime scene? I know all that I need to know in order to arrest you, and nothing more. Are you saying there is more I need to know? <laughs> and he hits Gumshoe. Sorry, Scruffy, my hand was... Or is she just so used to it? It appears that Francisca doesn't have all the facts of this case. Okay. Okay, so I'm thinking... Very large body was discovered. I'm thinking we give her the suitcase since it was there to transport the victim in the first place. Objection! Yeah. Hey, it's only took me four minutes. Usually it takes me like ten because I always like to press every sentence. It appeared that you did not have all the information you needed after all. And what does that mean? I found a nice piece of evidence just before I was forced to stop investigating. A piece that proves the body was moved from a different location. The killer used this suitcase to move the victim's body, meaning that the real scene of the crime is not this lounge at all. Objection! Oh, so that's how it's said. Now who's the one rashly jumping to conclusions? Excuse me? All you did was find this piece of cloth inside the suitcase. That doesn't prove that the body was moved. It could be that the killer simply chose that suitcase as a good place to hide the cloth. I expected you would come to that conclusion. It would seem I can't escape that easily. But you're no better than that. Von Karma is perfect in every way. 
Ah, but did you know that the killer definitely wheeled the suitcase around at some point? Objection! As if there's proof of that! Where's the proof that the suitcase was moved around? There's proof! Oh, the wheels! Oh, there are wheels around that area! So it had to have been moved! Spill the grape juice in the front of the elevator. Yes, I'd like to draw your attention to this area here. Where's the evidence that proves killer dragged the suitcase? Yeah, because there are like little wheel things. Trust me, it's gonna get a lot harder later. It's not gonna be this easy. Take that. This mark here, won't you say it looks suspiciously like tracks from two wheels? I suppose. Further, there's also grape juice residue on the wheels of the suitcase. There is? That means the suitcase contained the victim's body definitely passed through here. I suppose this means that the killer... ...did move the victim's body from somewhere else. I'm glad you've come to your senses. Objection! Not so fast! It still doesn't put you in the clear! Not by a long shot. Alright, time for the part two. You prepared yourself and acquired the piggy pink before the plane hit that terrain. I'm not even going to try anymore. And then you waited for the victim in the lounge where you beat him to death. Then, while you were in the elevator with the victim's body stuffed in the suitcase, the plane hit that patch of turbulence and out flew the body from within the suitcase. Phone! Give me one second. Ugh, stupid college life being annoying with people texting and stuff. Anyway, the plane hit that patch, flew the suitcase, and the body moved. I don't even really know what she was talking about. With no way out, you hastily put the suitcase back where you had taken it from. Okay, and pretended to be the discoverer of the body. Um, not a bad bit of logic for something you thought of on the fly. Just what are you insinuating? That I will show you exactly how flawed your logic is. No matter how strong a face you put on, not even you can hide the fears from me. I'll expose the flaws in her logic in one fell swoop. I don't even know what a flaw was! Um, wait a second. Prepare to acquire the piggy bank. And then you wait for a victim in the lounge where you beat him to death. So we wait for the lounge, then while you're in the elevator with the victim's body in the suitcase. So we stuffed the guy inside the suitcase. The plane hit a patch of turbulence and now flew the body from within the suitcase. So we're in the elevator um, in, with the suitcase and we had taken it. Hmm. Actually, I actually have no idea. Her logic is reasonably sound. The large majority of it reflects the truth. But there is one point about it that is not quite right. It has something to do with the elevator, doesn't it? For the plane hit turbulence. That's true. You wait for a victim in the lounge where you beat him to death. Mm. Let me press this area. Something doesn't seem right about that. I thought there wasn't any of the victim's blood found in the lounge. Hmm. I thought you'd say that. What? Did you think I wouldn't have noticed? I think you just found a way to cleverly hide the blood splatter in the lounge. How? By accidentally spilling grape juice. Oh. Urgh. Are you accusing me of tampering with the crime scene now? Can we just show her, like, the wallet and, like, that proves wrong? The forensic scientists are hard at work as we speak. And, what do you propose I did after that? Okay, so I can't get anything from that. Victim's body stuffed in the suitcase. Wait one second. Was the victim's body in the suitcase? Yeah, it probably was, to be honest. Um... Hmm... I don't know, actually. Oh, wait a minute! I know! I know! Okay, should we acquire the piggy bank before the turbulence? No, we acquired it during the... No, the iFly piggy bank thing came after the turbulence because the hat was gone. Objection. I get it now. Okay, I'm stupid. I'm stupid. I got that from the stupid counter. <laughs> got that from the stupid counter. Jesus, that was stupid of me. Took this piece of evidence into account in your testimony. It's to be commended. Your legal prowess is certainly something to be feared. Evidence and logic. Essentially tools that those which stand in the courtroom must learn to master. Hey, I think I'm getting better. 
You know, that are going like horrifyingly bad. But what if there was a fake piece of evidence thrown into the mix? A fake? This Mr. I Fly Piggy Bank is just such a fake. It is not the real murder weapon. What? The timing of when the bank was taken from the shop is important. And it was taken after the turbulence had occurred. But then, what about the blood on the bank? What do you think of that? I assume it was added after the murder when the killer fabricated this weapon. Looking at it this way, the killer basically did three things after the turbulence. After exiting the elevator, the killer brought the suitcase to the shop and left it there. Then the killer proceeded to pick the bank up off the floor and took it to fabricate a fake murder weapon by hitting the victim on the head. Finally, the victim's wallet was planted on my personage, in my pocket to be precise. Everything was done so that I would be framed for the murder of Mr. Jack B. Hicks. HA! Take that! You there! Yes, ma'am! Other than this piggy bank, was anything else resembling a murder weapon found? We didn't find anything in this lounge or in the shop that could be used as one, ma'am. Most of the items I could have used were broken during the turbulence. And the remaining items all tested negative for any traces of blood. I see. Well, Miles Edgeworth, it appears your style tactics are at an end. But it's impossible that it's just hidden somewhere, sir. Dang! He didn't have to even hit him. If the criminal had wanted to hide the weapon in a safer place, I think the weapon would have been hidden in the same place as the bloody cloth. Exactly what I was thinking. Because the cloth was hidden inside that suitcase, it signals to me that the killer had not prepared a more secure place to hide the evidence. Which means that the real murder weapon is either still on the first personage, or still at the real crime scene. Objection! More? There's one more possibility? And that would be that the piggy bank is in fact the real weapon. But didn't we just... Let me finish! The killer took the bank out from the display case before the turbulence. No, it couldn't have. By opening the lock on the display case door. And it was at that time the glass pane in the door was broken. I'd say that's a perfectly reasonable line of reasoning, wouldn't you? Let's see, so that means the killer had the key to this display case. Francisca, that person you're talking about. Oh boy! The person I'm talking about also committed another sin. She tricked the captain. And granted you permission to conduct your investigation. Yes, it is sin of lying. I think there are worse sins out there. Speaking of which, I recall that you wished to speak with her. Yes. Very well, permission granted, but only if you can sit in on your interrogation. Do we understand each other? I have no intention of interrogating her, but you are welcome to accompany me if you wish. Mr. Nero is in the flight attendant's room. Let's move. All right, we'll do that next episode. In the next episode, we're going to see Miss Nero's alibi or whatever she has and maybe figure out what the heck's going on in this place. All right, this is Neon362 signing off. I'll see you all next time.